first. Matt, this is where Nick Hansen's got to suck it up. $10,000, come on. Nick Hansen, 18 feet away from $10,000. Come on now, come on. Hustle, Run. hustle, hustle. My man. Here he is. <laughs> hey, Nick, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? That's the question. I can I can hear you, but I can't see you. You've gone oh, – now you've muted yourself. Um, Different things of why I can't – why my video is not popping up. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah bottom – there we hey. go. There we go. Now we got it. My man. Let's see if I can get this exposure down. Are you on your phone? I am on my phone. My laptop is currently incapacitated. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough, bro. Um, oh, sorry, man. I've got my uh, breakfast, got the coffee going, so I'm just multitasking. Um, Wait, it's breakfast time there for you? Yeah, man, 8 a.m. Oh, my goodness. You I didn't get... realize you were having to do, like, an 8 a.m. move. Hold hey, on a man. second. I got an idea to get this exposure set up. <laughs> oh, good. Hey, it's better than the situation I had with Akbar. He, he said to me, he goes, oh, is 11, 11 a.m. good? 11 a.m. L.A. time. I looked at, I looked at the conversion. It said 4 a.m., and I was like, Damn, but then oh, in my gosh. Head, and I wrote, yeah, nah, that's fine. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like as I was thinking, as I was thinking, oh man, this is no good. I was like, yeah, and that's what I was like, oh well, I've committed to it. So it's uh it's all good. Bro, how you been, man? Obviously, last time we caught up, I had just gotten back from uh LA. I was in self-isolation. Uh and we were like all bummed about everything that happened, but there was a nice turnaround for you yeah which is which is awesome um what's been happening man since we spoke last which i think was there eight. we go that looks way better yeah it looks nice now the exposure's not all messed up boom get a little <laughs> bit of our this white too look at that turtleneck what's up with that <laughs> there yeah, we man, go no, no judgment man no judgment <laughs> It's hey, it's Alaska. What am I gonna do? It's a, it's it's starting to get it's starting to get Alaskan type co uh, colors and temperatures. So it's definitely definitely got the Alaska beginnings of what our weather's gonna do, and it's changing big time. Yeah, Boom. I can imagine. I can imagine. No, I mean since since we've been together, like since we got together last time, dude, it's mm. been awesome like everything's been really cool um obviously last time we talked they had postponed the season and now we've had the season and it's been a very very good turnout i think for what american Ninja warrior is trying to produce mm. you know it really um really didn't feel like it mattered that the audience wasn't there I thought like they yeah. did such a good job. I was a bit worried, like, oh, I don't know how this is gonna go. But having all the big screens, but still having all the all the the noise in the background, mm -hmm. um, I thought that was like that was really it was nice. It like it, it worked. Um, yeah. So I saw. I didn't realize this happened to you, but I guess it happened. I'm not sure when it happened, but you lost all your equipment. Well, you lost your gym, like. Mother Nature just went, nope, no Eskimo. <laughs> Not today for Eskimo Ninja. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, no kidding. Holy smokes. I mean, um, what uh, so obviously it was a storm, but like, give me the run through. Like, what, what was going on? Yeah. So um, basically, what every single fall we get a storm and we're almost always kind of prepared for it and understanding that we're going to get storms all the time. I knew that my ninja course was always in jeopardy. Um, which is why I built it out of driftwood in the first place. Cause it's like, well, it's driftwood anyways. That's how I got, that's how the wood got here was through a storm. So now I just, now I'm just going to use it and make it something uh, into something cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, yeah, that this year's storm happened to be 
or not this this fall storm, but the fall storm last year when I was when I was getting ready for the next season, <clears throat> it hit really really hard. And finally, like after s- like f- six years, I built that warp wall, and six years I had my salmon ladder. Um, and after six years, they finally got just completely demolished. I mean, wow. the entire so the way that the beach works at, at my course, it kind of the beach kind of comes up, and then it drops into this grassy like sub layer and then it's like a, so basically it creates a pool if the water gets flooded into that area mm. and it just created this huge pool and then there's the road and the road's like six feet or eight feet above sea level for to create like a kind of a dam for the rest of the town okay but it's in that pool and and basically all the driftwood and all the water and everything off of that was coming in from the storm landed in my course and it just kind of like started getting washed around and beaten around and knocked over the wind blew over my warp walls even though they were tied together um for weight wow. that blew both of the warp walls over and they just smashed them and and then uh, all that driftwood got rushed in there and it just wiped out my salmon ladder and everything just kind of got beaten up and uh and then uh, i had to go out there and and get it all fixed up and tune it back up for the season as best as I possibly could because it happens right before the frost and then so like the next week it was like the frost and the and frozen so I couldn't dig holes to put new salmon ladder posts back in or anything Um, so I really had to like come up with new ways to adapt and overcome. Man that's hectic so did this happen uh, before we were meant to film in March or was this did this happen in between it happened like literally right now last year like this time of year last oh, year so it was it was before we started to film in march when we were originally going to shoot the the season okay. 12 okay so yeah wow is is there a reason why you built it there and not like near your house like is there no space near where you you live yeah, I mean, one of the reasons why is because my dad likes his grass. <laughs> he's he's one of those guys. Um, so um, alone. <laughs> yep, he's like, um, he wants to keep the yard for his yard stuff, you know. So um, we own the land all the way to the beach. So that part of the beach is actually technically ours, according to our like, according to the government, right? Okay. So. So it would just kind of made sense, but also, you know, mindset wise, like I was thinking, man, it'd be really nice to land on soft sand rather than land on grass. You know, when you, when I fall off my salmon ladder from 14 feet high. So I was, (laughs) that's one of the main reasons why I was like, okay, I'll put it on the beach. Um, And well, that was also a backfire because the place I put it turned into a grass area after the sand got washed away by a storm. So (laughs) it was kind of a, it was a backfire upon another backfire that turned into my training grounds. <laughs> oh man, that's hectic. So I saw, I saw from the um, from Ninja, they, they, so a whole bunch, the community helped you with moving your equipment out. Where did you, where did you set it up? Like where, where what, what happened after that? Um, I kept it in the same spot actually. So oh, you- um, basically, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so a lot of the Makes framework, <laughs> a lot of the framework was posted like my devil steps and, and those things like those, <clears throat> those stayed strong. Like they were still in the ground cause they had four five or six posts all tied together with the devil steps and with the cliffhanger. So like that actually stayed really strong and solid and it didn't go anywhere really. And the, and the way that it was set up, there was a spider wall on one side, which got, tanked but it took the brunt of the force so it was like you know four four or eight sheets of plywood worth of like a wall that blocked the storm from really kind of crushing all of that stuff so that actually survived really well oh wow so i i kept all of that and um that so that was like two or three obstacles that survived out of my 20 um <clears throat> so i kept all of that area and and i just kind of built around it again um and the guys came in with loaders like like full on bulldozers and loaders and dump trucks. And they kind of pushed all this driftwood out of the way and they cleaned up and leveled it all really nicely. And they leveled the sand underneath that of the areas they could reach. And it was, 
it uh it really cleaned up nice and um yeah my whole town just kind of came together and really helped me put it back together because they wanted to see me succeed it was cool 100 percent Oh, that's awesome. So you got, I thought from the video, I thought they like moved the wall or something in, in inside or into a, into a building or I thought they moved a lot of your equipment um, inside, but no. <laughs> nope. Nope. And actually, side note, uh, funny story about the walls. When they picked them up on the forklifts, they, they held up and I was like, all right, sweet. They're still surviving. We'll just stand them back up. <laughs> and then as soon as he set them down on the ground, it was like uh, – it was like a movie scene where everything, all the pieces just kind of go slowly, just plop, plop, <laughs> plop. And it just kind of crumbled. And we we're like, no. Oh. And John Halloran was the guy that was doing it for me. And he's really good with the, with equipment. And he, <laughs> he looked at me like right away and he was like, it wasn't me. <laughs> I just set it down on the ground. <laughs> um, I was like, don't worry about it. It's, it was made with sheetrock screws. I didn't even put it together with like screws that can handle weather <laughs> man it's so. amazing has it, it didn't break on you before <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> oh man so wow okay so i thought you see i thought this happened for you in between march and man i'm like man that's i mean man that this poor man is trying to trying to train and couldn't <laughs> couldn't get ready for the season but little did i know that coming into our season originally you, you're already in that situation so yeah <laughs> that um Oh, uh, that's crazy. So how has been, how's the COVID situation been, I guess, for you since when we spoke? Has it been um, I, well, I mean, just as anybody would expect, right? Like quarantine was quarantine and we were all trying to figure out ways to get around it. Um, you know, I'm, <clears throat> you know, obviously the podcast is a wonderful idea to get to talk to ninjas and talk to things about, you know, how we're doing that. That was a really cool way to stay connected. And then you could see it on Instagram and social media, all the different challenges people were coming up with. How many pushups can you do in one, t one minute? How, you know, all these different things um, just to kind of stay, you know, within your within your own range of sanity yeah um so as far as i'm concerned like i'm i've always tried to come up with something imaginative anyways so i'm always trying to think of new ways to do something cool um to do something fun and and try to get people motivated so i started my own little workout series and That's and you know just like this is what i'm doing at home like i even did all my native games within my house like um and just tried to keep people motivated to stay active and stay training even though it's tough <clears throat> um but then like as far as like work goes that's kind of where a lot of i think a lot of like guys that quote consider themselves full-time ninja mm -hmm. i think a lot of those guys got hit really hard you know especially um with the way that you can't go to gyms to do any camps you can't go to schools and like be motivating you can't have summer camps like Grant, I'm not sure if you've talked to him on your podcast recently, um, but he got hit hard because he had a whole summer camp planned that was his. Like it was going to be the Island Ninja summer camp oh, and he had to man. cancel that. Um, so like I think a lot of guys got hit hard. But what I just did was I just embraced the communicate communications like let's stay connected without being connected. You know what I mean? I kind of embraced that and kind of turned it into like, hey, everything that we had planned let's make it virtual and let's still do it. Let's still make this happen. And I was real adamant about keeping my job and keeping my motivational speaking career going, mm -hmm. but turning it into a virtual visit, you know, and saying, Hey, I'll, I'll be there just like I am right now with you on this podcast. Mm -hmm. We can still do this and I can still try to be motivating to these young people. And even now more than ever, they need it because now they can't go hang out with their friends and they need somebody to be there for them. And I want to show them that that's me. And so, um, I just kind of embraced it and instead of like complaining about it and wondering what I'm going to do, I just embraced it and turned it into an opportunity. And, um, you know, that's the kind of mindset you got to have if you want to stay successful and, and continue to, um, you know, make your life something that you want it to be. Oh, a hundred percent. That's great, man. It's great that you pivoted and it's like, yep, yeah, let's just, let's just find a solution. You know, that's. It's definitely, you know, and that's how pretty much every great company was uh, developed, you know, through, uh, so uh, mm. I'm looking forward to the, you know, es Eskimo Ninja Inc. Incorporated production <laughs> or whatever. 
<laughs> Whatever you're coming oh, man. up with. <laughs> That'd be a really cool sign. Don't yeah, get yeah, me yeah. started, bro. Don't yeah. get me started. <laughs> Custom made driftwood salmon ladders. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Actual iceberg balance obstacles. <laughs> you find a way to just keep the ice frozen permanently or something. I don't know. You just <laughs> Well, I'll figure out a way. You wait. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, no, nah, that's good, man. I'm glad. I'm glad you. You know, you're okay, and you've. Uh, I mean, you haven't had too many cases in Alaska, have you? So, it, it's been okay. Um. Oh, I mean, not like in in Alaska. Alaska per capita, we're we're about average. We're about the same as most other cities. Obviously, we're not like going to be anything near what LA or New York or any of those guys have. I mean, nobody yeah. would. They're the most populated cities in the world, yeah. or, or in some some of the most populated cities in the world. But um, you know, like our village, we had a total a total since COVID started. We've had a total of about ten cases. Um, and they were all brought in through travel by essential workers, which is a little frustrating yeah. um, because w what's considered essential, right? Like, mm. I mean, technically, you know, from my perspective, my job is essential because I do suicide prevention, which is super essential, especially in these tough times when we're trying mm. to figure out what we're doing in our life. But that's not deemed essential because it doesn't provide a product. It doesn't provide a produce, you know, produce for their, you know, store or like. Uh, keeping us connected through a cell phone company you know someone to come in and work on our towers like that's what essential is considered and it's like well i mean I, I i think my job is even more essential than those guys because i'm the one trying to keep everybody's morale up you know what i'm saying like that's what we do as ninjas that's our job so i mm -hmm. feel like ninja warrior is an essential thing like we have to have that as a motivator mm -hmm. so um so yeah i think that um you know but but through those essential workers we got cases and then they were in contact with people they had to work with in our town which got COVID as well so there was like one guy that came in and he got two other people sick and then there was another guy that came in and, she, mm. and she, or a girl that came in and she got three other people sick and so it was just like you know it wasn't very real to our community until that happened and now this now trying to come into town if you wanted to come and visit good luck good luck <laughs> good luck coming into our town man you got to fill out all kinds of paperwork and <laughs> oh, it's a mess. I'm not even there. I'm stuck in town because I'm trying to figure out what, how I'm supposed to get home. And I live there. <laughs> oh man. That's, oh man, that's crazy. Oh, and yeah. my mom's the mayor. Like I, I'm supposed to have the key to the city. Like she's like, Nope, you can't come. Sorry, son. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's, that's funny. Look, it's bad, but it's, Oh man. Oh, well, that's good then. At least you haven't had, well, it's not great, but at least you haven't had too many cases. My state. So once, when I spoke to you, I was in a self isolated quarantine. So I didn't leave the house. I actually didn't leave the top floor of my grandparents' um, house. So I was upstairs and they were downstairs. So I was in like an executive suite, like a prison, like, like, like a really nice prison. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's got hectic in my state. Like we, um, I don't know if we've had the most cases, but I, I think so. I think we, we've had the most problems because, you know, we make up a you know good portion of the, you know, uh, population, uh, you know, uh, the economics. So, you know, we make up 25% of the nation's economy. So I think we reached a point where we started to open up and then the, there was some sort of scandal where, uh, a bunch of people who were uh, traveling in and, and quarantined in hotels. Um, there was an issue with security guards that would, uh, that was mingling with these people. And then um, they got COVID and then they went back obviously to their communities and spread it far and wide. And then we, we actually went into a stage four lockdown, which meant that we, oh. have, we had a, a, have a curfew. So we have to be home by a certain time. Uh, we're not allowed out unless it's exercise for one hour and you're only allowed five K's from where you live. So it's, it's like, it was like being in prison effectively. You know, you get your one hour of exercise. Uh, uh, so, so, supposedly only one person is allowed to shop from the house a day. Um, so it's been pretty interesting and uh, you know, police patrolling, checking people if they have permits or um, uh, yeah, it's, it's been pretty 
it's been pretty interesting. Um, is it still that way, like right now? Technically, yeah. I mean, it, it's a bit. It's kind of hard for the the police to to police a whole state. Um, so I don't see them too often. Um, but I think at night they're definitely probably out and about. So we had a curfew until eight pm. Now it's been extended to nine, which is you know super cool. <laughs> <laughs> um oh man yeah and they're slowly gonna ease back so it's been it's just been really hectic because uh you know there's an issue with like welfare and all that stuff but then but then they're uh trying to they're trying to ease back welfare but then they haven't opened up all the industries so it's 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 a mess (laughs) wow so it's uh yeah definitely been interesting in victoria but uh so training's been tough um I must say, uh, but you know, you do what you can. Tell me, um, tell me about this uh, uh, breaking the bicycle thing. Because are you still oh. are, you, are you still on the go? Are you still riding? Or are you done? You, you you're home. With- I mean, I'm still I'm still riding, but I'm not on the I'm not on the ride. Like, <clears throat> oh, okay. So, so basically, the way that we set up, basically the way. Sorry, I'll just track it. Uh, basically, the way we set up the ride was. Um, a bunch of us would go at like certain times and try to like keep keep the ride going so we would take over different legs and then someone else will take over and someone else will take over and the guy that started it his name is Damon Bellhalter and he was actually he actually played in the NBA for the Boston Celtics Mm. and he's originally from a small village in Alaska Um, and he's half black half indigenous so he's um, you know I'm half white half indigenous so him and I hit it off right away because we both experienced racism in different ways Mm. Um, and so when he reached out to me he was like hey I want to I want to start this program called break the bicycle because I want to break the cycle of you know mental illness and and suicide in men indigenous and black men um, in Alaska because and we specifically put it in Alaska because that's the way it was and then we went down to Seattle to start our bike ride and realized the more we talked to people the more we got involved with different programs that were already there to try to say hey what do you guys need because we're starting this and we're going to raise a bunch of funds for it um, we, how much money do you guys need and there and we started realizing there weren't programs there either and then there we realized there's there wasn't programs where we were trying to go. There was like maybe one program or two programs for black and indigenous men to have somewhere to talk or somebody to talk to besides uh you know an eight hundred hotline or something that they can call into, which is available to anybody on the planet mm. um so we were like, okay, this is bigger than just us, like we've really got to make this something real, so we decided we were gonna ride our bikes <clears throat> um we we're gonna ride our bikes from the top of the West coast to the bottom of the West coast. And we are going to try to bring awareness and kind of forest gump our way across the West coast of the United States to um, bring awareness to the programs that we want to try to help create mm-hmm. and um, breaking the bicycle, you know, <clears throat> was kind of like, you know, a metaphor in ways because we want to ride our bikes until they break. We want to break the bicycle. We're going to go 1400 miles on um, yeah. these bikes and then um, in the process, we're also going to break the cycle of mental illness in men. And we're going to work on brainstorming along the way, riding together, talking about it, hashing things out. What have we been through? What do we want guys to be able to accomplish? Writing that all down, taking it as an opportunity to, um, to set up something. And then potentially turning that into an opportunity for more guys to join next summer like let's go do something another ride on the east coast let's go do another ride from west coast to east coast how crazy would that be you know what i mean like how can we expand upon it to make it not just something that was very serene for ourselves and an opportunity for us to work together but also something that guys can come and do and join us on and we have now we have like 10 15 bicycles that we can just loan out to people we've got a support van where we've got the tents we've got the sleeping bags we've got everything we possibly need um along the way to help make it possible for other guys to join that want to just come out there and and get into nature for a while and it was it it turned out really cool man i mean like um i rode from i rode personally i rode 500 over 500 miles of the ride um and we did that in about six days seven days 
Um, so we were running 60, between 60 to 100 miles a day. Wow. And, um, and it was intense. I'd never done something like that before. I'm a ninja. So everything I do is explosive. Right. And, and if you look at my native games career, it's all explosive. It's all, you know, one ton and go, I'm not running 10 K's. I'm not out there, you know, hiking for eight miles a day. I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I, I do things big and I, and, but I'm an athlete and I understand what it takes to persevere through things that you you're struggling with. Mm-hmm. And one day I just felt, I just felt like my body couldn't go anymore. And I literally got on my phone and I started filming and I was like, you guys, this sucks. Like, I need your, I need your help Instagram. And I got so many, I got like over a hundred positive messages from people saying, you've got this, keep it up. You're strong. You can do this. And it took me like five scrolls to page through the scrolls on the Instagram messages that day. Wow. And it, it lifted my spirits like that i mean it was like nope i can't do this today you guys i can't do this and then like an hour later after going through a few of them and reading some of the stuff and like seeing what people are saying and how proud they are of us and whatever i was just like you guys i just passed damon i'm like ahead of the crew i'm in the leader of the pack now you guys i'm feeling good about it um so you know it's it's obviously it's a fundraiser that we're doing you know um called break the bicycle but you know and there's a gofundme page and and social media accounts and things like that you can go find out more information but i think it but it was also for me personally like my experience with it it was a very 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 much needed break from from the world because at Mm -hmm. times we didn't have cell phone service I didn't even have time to think about scrolling through social media. Really. It wasn't like I was, I was trying to document as much as I could, but I just didn't really have the energy or the time because I was on a bike most of the time. And I was just enjoying being with my, yeah. Being Mm. with my thoughts for a while, enjoying the, just all the different scenery passing by enjoying pulling my bike over to the side at a creek and just jumping off that bridge into a really deep creek and just and then just getting right back on the bike in all my clothes and being cooled off for the day because it was 90 degrees outside or something you know like all of those different things just kind of turned it into this very healing and like serene experience and um, and I recommend it to anybody out there, whoever's watching this right now, if you're watching this right now and you just want to go and disconnect for a while, go ride 500 miles for a week and you'll feel very disconnected. And so will your ligaments and your muscles and your say. legs <laughs> afterwards. Your disconnection will be physical and liter- and, and metaphorical for you guys. <laughs> Trust me. You hop off your bike, but your legs are still there. <laughs> yep. Hopefully. <laughs> oh man nah, that's awesome so you so the other dudes are still so obviously it wasn't just in alaska you said you started in mm-hmm. seattle the other mm-hmm. dudes are still going but you you've hopped off and you you've come back did you, did you ride back or how, how did it work how did you ride back to alaska <laughs> yeah, did i ride three thousand more miles to get home <laughs> um no, I put my bike on a plane, man. I wasn't about to do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so my my leg was until like the seventh or eighth. That was kind of like the time that I had to come home because I had a few different um, work things that I needed to get done. And then the frost kind of starts to hit. And so mm-hmm. I wanted to get a lot of my housework done because I'm still building my house. Um, so I wanted to um, get a lot of my housework done before the frost hit. And so um that was kind of like a big thing that but I was planning on leaving to go back like tomorrow like tomorrow the the 20th or the 21st or something well that's today I guess I was planning on going back and rejoining the group but they had to switch because of the fires on the west coast they had to switch plans like completely so they ended up taking the van and driving like perpendicularly across to the great divide so now they're going down the great divide Wyoming Colorado New oh, Mexico. Nice. And so they're doing like the great divide. And right now they're in Denver and Denver, Ooh. the Denver news got a hold of them, like channel 13, the biggest news station in Denver got a hold of them and they found them and said, well, these guys are doing this. Let's let, you know, and they put them on the news and stuff and talked about it. So um, awesome. they're getting the publicity they need and it's a lot of fun. And um, there's two guys that are running, but one guy's doing it the whole way. And that's Damon Bellhalter, the NBA player. Um, and he's going the whole way. He's gone 
a thousand miles so far on his ride. He's got 500 more miles to go. Man, I'd hope so, man. I'd hope the the, the alpha, the leader, uh, <laughs> yep. the whole thing. But that's impressive. I can't. I yep. can only imagine the scenery. Like I'm just. I'm just thinking. Oh. Based off what you said, I'm just imagining it now. I'm like, oh, that'd be so epic. Yeah. Oh man. So, so tell me about this. So this season uh, seems obviously it's different with you know no audience or whatnot, but it just seems like it's a very different format. This whole you know team thing that they're going with. Um, I guess were you were you, so you were casted obviously for uh, you were, you were casted was everyone else who I guess was on the team were they a part of the original cast uh, or were they a part of the casting or was it you were just be able to pick whoever and they just chose like I, I was a bit confused as how that how that actually mm-hmm. came about so they it, I mean uh, so they took in they brought in 50 ninjas that were returning ninjas quote unquote so yeah um, you know and they even called me a seasoned vet on the show I thought that was interesting I'm not I'm not used to that yet um, <laughs> but they brought in like what are considered seasoned veterans right or yeah. or ninjas that have been on the show for a while and have done very very well like RJ Roman has been on the show for maybe two years so he's not like been on it for six seven eight like a few of us have or 12 in some cases Mm. um so he's not like this seasoned vet but he is a such a strong ninja he deserves to be a team captain right because Mm. he's just so good um Mm. so there's there was a bunch there's 50 of us that got selected and then we got to kind of suggest our two teammates okay and then or the production gave us suggestions and then we got to kind of be like, well, I really like this person and I work well with this person or I don't really know that person. So it's kind of like an eh. Mm. Um, so it was kind of like um, they came up with suggestions of their own and then we kind of got to counter our counter negotiate our own suggestions and then say, man, you should really look at this person or you should really look at this person. Um, in my case, it was easy because there's like, two of us in Alaska, (laughs) two or three of us ninjas in Alaska. And so, um, it was really cool. And then But they, they, yeah, so they got, they, the team captains kind of got to select who they wanted to be on their team. And it couldn't be another like returning ninja really, unless production suggested that to be happening. So like Flip and JJ couldn't get back together and be a team again and smoke everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but it was also a great opportunity for, you know, like the big dogs, like big, the big boys, like Grant's team to, you know, get, all the tall big dudes in a room which is the speedo ninja who's a really great great ninja um and he's been a veteran on the show as well so they put those two together but more so for the storyline because they're both six foot four and 250 pounds and they got put together with an nfl football star you know what i mean like it was just it was the big the big boy show yeah um but yeah so it was it was really cool and the teams weren't like you know, if I do well, if I do well, my team does well, or, if, you know, we were competing against each other too, mm. our community wise. But if you got to the power tower, which was a speed and you won the power tower, you got to bring your two teammates with you unless even no matter how bad or good they did. So mm. that was kind of a motivator for you to say, I want my community, my team to do well, but it wasn't like team ninja warrior where you have to do well for each other. It was more like there's a bonus at the end of this. If you guys can go fast enough and then win the power tower. So it was a lot riding on it. And um, you know, then you got to pull your, your two ninjas back in. So um, that's not me. (laughs) I was like, you guys, just a heads up. You're not going through. You have to do well. I'm not the speed. I'm not the speed guy. I'm the methodical. (laughs) Make sure I get to the end of this thing, guy. So you guys are going to have to go fast and do well on your own. (laughs) Listen, guys, straight up. I don't have you. (laughs) You're on your own. (laughs) But I'll be there to support you the whole way. 
<laughs> That's hilarious. Um, so obviously you had a very stacked heat, man. I felt I felt bad, man. I mean, you had a, an amazing run, but like that was a super stacked heat. Yeah. Leading uh, so leading into it, how much training, like how how much of your gym had you fixed up in order for you to? Oh, it was it was already it was already it was already solid, wasn't it? Because that's why that happened like last year. So yeah, did you um, have a full so- gym? <clears throat> So before, before March, before mm. the March st- stuff was supposed to happen, I didn't have a warp wall or a salmon ladder Oof. because I wasn't able to rebuild those before March. Um, but then once that got postponed and we weren't sure when we were going to film, everything thawed by early June in Alaska. Um, so early June, I built two warp walls right away. I built a, um, I built a 15-footer fif- a um, and then I built a 10-footer for the kids. And then I was also going to build an 18 footer next to it, but I didn't have enough materials. So I scrapped that whole plan and I just said 15 feet is going to have to do, and I'll just put my elbows up to it or something and try to go high. Yeah. Um, yeah. So before, before the COVID St. Louis season of American Ninja Warrior, I was able to rebuild my warp wall. I did put up another salmon ladder and um, I was able to kind of train the way that I normally would have been training for what American Ninja Warrior is. I just had kind of like a, it was kind. It was kind of hasty, you know, because we weren't mm. sure exactly when we were gonna film. So it was kind of like you had to, you had to plan as if you were, you know, you pe- I was supposed. I was peaking already at March. Like I was peaking. So yeah. I kind of had to like maintain that peak until they said we're ready to go. You know. So it was like, it was high intensity maintenance training for the uh, up until COVID, the COVID St. Louis season. Mm. Um, and, um, and I was able to build uh, a, a few obstacles to keep me kind of tuned up. So oh, it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad in the preparation department it, um, because we're so isolated in Euclid anyways. I could just go out to my course and say, all right, you guys, I, you got to go home because it's COVID and you can't be here. This is mine. <laughs> I get to do whatever I want with it. <laughs> um, and then all the kids would go home and then I would, when I, I'll be done in an hour. And then when I was done, I would stick to my hour because the kids would show right back up at like an hour later. Yeah, kick you off your own course. <laughs> yep, yep. It happened sometimes. Oh man, well, dude, it was, it was a pretty, it was a pretty hectic course. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what other uh, crazy obstacles are going to come in the next few episodes. Akbar hinted, you know, he's like, man, we, we had something, something called the corkscrew, and it's like, oh man, like, he's like, he's hinting like this, this season was was nuts probably things I, sh- I shouldn't actually know but uh <laughs> so what obstacle for you uh yeah, i had this whole plan i was gonna like bring up your run and then like do analysis with you but i, I, I forgot to i forgot to do it um so you know first up school you had the um what are they call did they call them mushroom steps is that what they call them shrinking steps i think shrinking, shrinking steps, steps. That's right. i call them the mushroom steps because they look like you know they look like little uh, mushrooms so you had the mushroom steps shrinking steps uh, I'm trying to remember what the second one was. I don't know. Lunatic if it was a... ledges. Yeah, that's right. The uh, and the the one that was taking out, well, not taking out a lot of people, but was throwing them off was the the tilting tilting ladder one. Yeah, the ring chaser. Ring chaser. That's what it was. Yeah, I, I was kind of surprised that a lot of people couldn't get to the ring in time. I think a lot of the ninjas from a lot of the more experienced ninjas did, but even then, some of the more experienced ninjas um we're really struggling uh mm-hmm. how, how did that obstacle feel for you when you got up when you got up on it um you know those those obstacles you where you have something that you you know you've got to engage it you've got to make it you got to be on top of your game those obstacles are when you go in and you just go <laughs> you, that's all you can do is just go just go and and you know you, you do try to think about it too much you're gonna mess yourself up i mean if you saw caleb uh Man, Bergie, if oh. you saw Bergie go on it, it was just like he, he thought way too much about it beforehand, and then he ended up making a simple mistake that cost him, and he's one of the strongest people on the planet. Mm. And so it was just – it was – I mean, literally, I watched – when I watched – I knew it had happened, but when I watched it on the show, my jaw was just like, no. You know, I was like literally in awe. Um, but in those moments, it's all about feeling. It's all about just feeling it and going for it. Mm. because you just got to make yourself 
do what you do. My plan, my original plan for that obstacle was to jump up because the first bar on the monkey bars, you have to engage. Mm. And that's what releases the ring. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you have to go back and re-engage it and then try to go back, which burns a bunch of energy. So you have to engage that first bar. Mm. And then my thought was I was going to grab with my right hand and then skip a rung grab so that I have an open grip like this. So I'm going boom, boom, and it's two big moves. And I grab the ring. It's no problem. I was there waiting for it. Mm. I, if you watch my run and you go back through it, I grab the bar and I just like do this. And I just start <laughs> monkey barring you know, because that's what my body naturally wanted to do. Mm. Because once I went up there, I, I didn't, I wanted to keep moving. So I didn't want to have to stop and think about it. I just said, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. And whatever mm. my mind decides to do, I know I can do it this way. And I know I can do it this way, whatever mm. my body decides to do. So I jumped up and then I grabbed the two bars like this, the first mm. and the second bar to engage. And then I just boom, 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 because I was like, okay, I got to beat this ring here no matter what. And mm. then I was able to grab the ring with plenty of time. Mm. So, you know, those kinds of obstacles, it's just a matter of you have a beta in your head, but don't, don't think about using that beta so much that you, you lose it. Just go up there and feel it out because you just got to go and you just got to go and you got to catch that ring. Don't be thinking about it. Just go and get it you know? Mm. And that's, that's what I was able to accomplish, uh, thankfully, um, on that course. Cause that was definitely one of the obstacles that was the most nerve wracking for a lot of ninjas. See, that's the thing. I'm, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I looked at it, uh, and I don't know, I guess obviously I wasn't there. I didn't compete. I didn't feel very intimidated by it. I don't know. Like, like mm -hmm. I, I looked at it, thought, okay, you know, just kind of like what you thought, you know, get that first one, get the second one. And just like you said, just go, there's not really much to, to think about in regards to yeah. the, the right move. It's just like, you just got to get there as fast to the end as you can mm -hmm. be able to grab that ring. So I, I don't know, but obviously I'm just a spectator. <laughs> yeah. I'm yep. a couch ninja at this point. So <laughs> no, you're, you're a real ninja. That's yeah. for sure. You've got great, you've got, You've got the skill set to be a great analysis for it. So, um, yeah, I, I fully agree with you, though. Don't be intimidated by it because if you are, you know, you, your, your greatest fear leads to your demise or whatever they say, something along those lines. Like if you think about it and you're scared about doing it, you're going to do what you think you're going to do if you're fearful, if you're fearful of, you know what I mean? Mm. So if you go up on a snowboard and you're trying to do a backflip and you're scared you're going to hit your neck, you're probably going to flip and then, hesitate right then and there and then hit your neck you know what i mean mm. you just got to go in full send and if you land on your back over rotating you're stoked because now you're like oh man all i gotta do is tune it down a little bit sweet yeah you know so if you get up there and you're just like boom 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 and you're like oh where's the ring oh it hasn't even come yet you know you're stoked because you have plenty of time to just put your hand in the way yeah no 100 percent uh but i must say that next obstacle oh that one looked a bit nasty the uh <laughs> i don't know what they were called the 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 balance one yo yeah what, what was going on with that <laughs> it was that eight. one you, you like start with like spread legs and then it just naturally spreads your legs even further so it's like it was just a really bad set of the splits waiting to happen <laughs> oh yeah i would have died because i have like the most inflexible hips so i would have <laughs> i would have torn my torn my groin and hamstring or something at the same time that was nasty it was just yeah it was it was like quad steps that moved out of your way. Um, um, and, uh, you know, the, the key to any balance obstacle and a lot of ninjas think that the balance obstacles are the hardest ones. They're always like, if you notice Jody Avila and those guys, like they were like, yeah, let's go after the, after the balance obstacles. And like I do ice hopping. So if you ever go on my Instagram or social media, you see me going ice hopping every spring. I go ice hopping. And I, I just, that's every balance obstacle I do is ice hopping to me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just thinking ice hopping, ice hopping hops. I got to have quick feet. You got to be ready for it to move out of your way. You got to be ready for the ice flow to sink into the water. And it's between you and getting wet and you can't get wet, especially in the cold. So, oh, hey, um, no. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of the way I think about it. And, um, that was like, it replicated ice hopping really well, that particular obstacle. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. And I think uh, maybe it was you, but I think, I think you went right to the edge of the platform. I noticed it curved a little bit mm -hmm. and the inexperienced ninjas, they sort of started halfway along the platform and they had this little sort of pitter patter and then mm -hmm. they hit it so slow that, you know, they had so much weight on each one. It just moved out of the way. 
Whereas I noticed you, mm, yeah, probably you, yeah, you went right to the edge. You're almost off yep. the edge and then just went sort of angled it. And that was, um, that was really, that was really nice, man. Yep. Yeah. Straight lines work really well on obstacles like that. And then, you know, the more power you have when you're taking off this hard platform that is solid, mm. the, the, the less work you have to do when you're on there, you're not trying to force yourself on a step where you're trying to push off of it because you know that it moves away from you and it goes out of the way. Or if you're on an obstacle where it's bungee corded and it bends down a lot, the less pressure you have to put on that while still maintaining that forward momentum, the better off you're going to be because um, you know, you, if you could take two steps and jump to the very end, you're, you know, you're done. That obstacle was a three-step obstacle. If you can make that happen. So you oh, just kind of come into it with as furious, fast and furious as you possibly can off the platform and then let your legs do the work like a ladder drill until you get to the end. Oh, a hundred percent. And probably something, maybe, I don't know if people don't know, maybe they do. You've expressed it, but you know, scientifically speaking. Um, so when you're accelerating, so the process of accelerating means you are increasing your speed over a given time. That's what accelerating is. So you're going from, you know, one speed to the other. And because of that, the ground force, uh, the ground reaction force is huge. So that's why in a sprinter's position, you're pushing so hard into the ground to build up that acceleration. But then once you reach top speed, the ground rea uh, ground reaction forces is reduced because you have more flight time, more air time. So that's the, the I guess the, the scientific reason just for people listening. Uh, so that's why, yeah, when you're going through those obstacles and you have all that momentum and you're at basically at your top speed, uh, you have such a little contact time on the actual obstacles. Hence why you, you destroyed them. Uh, <laughs> so you then had the Ferris wheel. Uh, so the return that one, mm -hmm. um, that one looks, I haven't had a chance to do it. Um, they brought it in this season in Australia. Uh, it took out quite a lot of Australian ninjas. I was, I was surprised. Um, how are you feeling with that? Cause you look a little bit gassed. It look, you look, looked a little tired by the, <laughs> by the end of it. How are you feeling? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll say my cardio, my cardio was not up to par during that COVID run. Like I, I didn't, <clears throat> I wasn't able to keep my cardio the way that I really like to um so i was definitely out of gas but my strength in my arms i knew was good enough to make it happen so i just kind of methodically took my time and i'd also known that i took a long time a couple extra swings here and there and i knew that once i get through the ferris wheels i'm not going to be in the top five so there's no point in me trying to rush mm -hmm. i should conserve a little bit of energy for the wall because i knew that one of my goals that, that was to do the mega wall and um, so I knew that I wanted to get the mega wall afterwards. So I kind of just conserved my energy and I kind of took my time and was a little bit more methodical as if I was campusing a really fun route at the rock gym. So when I got up on there, the holds were nice. They were super juggy. It was like climbing a V2 or V3, like juggy holds. And I was like pulling myself up, no problem. But when I got to the top two, like the top two, the ones that turn and make it go down, mm. they're like made out of painted wood. The other ones are like this rubber, you know, that really nice yeah, yeah. ATS co coated comfortable stuff you find. Yeah. The top two are made out of like, they're just painted red wood and yeah. they're like more like a V4, like goes from V3 to V4 on a, on a bouldering wall. Right. So now all of a sudden you're holding on, instead of having a jug, you're holding on with just your fingers like oh, this. Shoot. And so it's a little bit slipperier and it's a little bit less of a hold. So you really had to like dig into your thumbs on the underneath and really make it work. So that way you're pinching it on your way down and over gripping. Mm. And so, um, yeah, I just never been on something like that where it was moving. Um, a lot of my obstacles are very stationary. So I know that I'm strong enough in my muscles, but when I'm moving around and I have to lift up and my left hand moves down, you know, I was just very careful. And I just moved through the Ferris wheels very carefully until I got to the top and I took my time cause I didn't want to drop super hard and peel off. Mm -hmm. Um, um, and yeah, it ended up looking like I was really gassed on the obstacle, but to be honest, like in my mind, I was just like, I'm very confident. I know I'm going to get through this. It's just a matter of time. Uh, <laughs> and so when I got to the very end and I'm swinging, that's when I finally started to feel a little bit of a pump. And I was like, okay, now I've got to really make sure that I don't peel off of this just by kicking and kipping hard in the wrong way. So I kicked very slowly to kind of just start it so I could feel comfortable. And yeah. then I just kicked off hard. Yeah. Um, and then I realized, wow, I'm pumped and I'm tired. So 
<laughs> I've got to really take my time before this wall if I want to get 10K. <laughs> Man, that was that was so awesome. So obviously, you know, you you hadn't had done you hadn't done the mega wall in some time. Uh, no one had done it yet. I think that the season. I don't think anyone had actually gotten it. So you're once again the first person to get it again. <laughs> yep. Um, what was what? I mean, did you have any doubt? Did you? What was going through your mind if you remember just before you you went for it? Um, I will say this. I never have any doubt because I, I know that having a doubt in your mind means that you're probably going to do what your doubt is. Like I doubt, I, I doubt I can drive this golf ball 300 yards. If you doubt it, you're only going to drive it 200 yards and you're going to be like, ah, see, I told you, mm. you know what I mean? So I never, I never allow myself to have any doubts. Um, was I confident and like very well much knew I could do it? Heck no, no way, no way, dude. Like you never know what's going to happen. Your foot could slip. Anything can go wrong. So you're never, you're never like, I'm never walking up to it going, Oh yeah, I got this. No problem. Mm. However, I did go up to it going, I'm going to get this and I'm going to will myself to the top of this. And I'm going to make sure that I grab the top of this because that's something that I really want to accomplish. And that's a goal I have set before myself and I'm going to achieve my goal. Mm. So like, I was confident in the, in the sense that I'm going, I'm going to make myself get this, but was I physically confident as I stepped off of the platform to step in front of it and walk up to it and look at it and go, you know, no, not a chance. It's the moment right before I take off where my confidence all comes back because it's that moment where you go, just go, man. Like you tell yourself, you tell yourself everything that your friends tell you when you're training with them, or you tell yourself everything that your, your girlfriend tells you, you know, I love you. That moment where she's just like, you know, I love you no matter what. And then it's just like, ugh, or like, just smile. And then you just giggle and you laugh to yourself a little bit. Like, I'm just go do it. You know what I mean? And then you have that moment of clarity and then you go for it. Mm. And so, um, leading up into it, definitely didn't think, Oh, I'm going to get a mega wall. Yeah. No problem, dude. Big time. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was more like, man, I hope I get this. I really, I really want to get this. Like, this is something that I, I'm passionate about so much passionate about that. I want to get this. I'm going to make this happen. And then I, you know, let out that primal scream and get up the wall. And, uh, and thankfully I grabbed it with both hands. <laughs> oh man, It was so good. Did it, uh, did it, uh, did it really bug you at the end of the night when I guess you realized you were outside the top 12? How did you feel? Uh, I got up to the top of the wall had my celebration talked yeah. to Akbar and Matt about it was feeling good about it went down to this interview that I had to do with Siri uh Azuri excuse me Siri <laughs> <laughs> I went down to my interview with Zuri um who is the most awesome and gentle person you'll ever meet in your entire life by the way Zuri is so cool um because I got emotional in the moment when my family came on the screen and like was they were crying and I started crying and Zuri started crying. So it was like, she's so empathetic and she's so cool. Um, but as I'm doing my interview and stuff, I was just literally like, I'm getting ready for this interview going. I didn't make it. I knew I didn't make it. I knew it the way I ran the course. I knew I wasn't fast enough. I was oh, like, man. Jake, Mur I, all I, all I thought in my head was Jake Murray, Ethan Swanson, Daniel Gill, Kayla Bergstrom. Like I started going through all the guys in my head, RJ Roman. Like there's so many guys. I was just like, yeah. I didn't make it. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, there's no chance that I made it fast enough, but Hey man, I came here for, with a goal in my mind. I did the 18 foot wall and that's all that matters to me. If I make it through to the next round then cool, if I don't make it through the next round, then cool. I'm, I still had a good time and I had fun and I came here to represent Alaska. Yeah. And, um, and it was a very emotional moment for me and the way Grant kicked his chair out of the way, uh, just like <laughs> everything was really cool. And um, I couldn't be more proud of my performance. Oh man, I'm proud of your performance, man. It was, it was so epic. Like, I mean, I knew, I knew after we trained, I'm like, man, this guy's so strong. I knew, I knew he was going to destroy it no matter, no matter what happens. So no, I'm, 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 I'm proud of you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. You get a nice little consolation prize, which is, which is, uh, yeah. which is awesome. Bro, I, I'm conscious of your time. I'm, I'm sure you got, you know, places to do, you know, being the, being the, uh, the son of the mayor. I know you've got, you know, probably things to do. <laughs> 
I don't know. You've got you know things to sign and and, and whatnot. Yeah, I've got some, right. <laughs> I've got some questions from uh, some uh, some fans. I'll love to run run through and then I'll, I'll let you go. Um, so the first one uh, was how was how has your community inspired you after the floods last year? Oh man, the the community coming together and supporting just me like I, I, like it's an overwhelming feeling of love and and compassion that you have because when literally a hundred people show up to to move wood and clean up and try to get things going again and they've got loaders and dump trucks and like they're donating all of that stuff to the and the end their time to volunteer to help clean that up i mean that's what it's all about that's what it that's what every that's what's wrong with our you know our society today our country yeah. especially in america yeah. especially in america our country and the way that we're suffering and with all the different social injustices and all those different things that are happening like if everybody just came together and brought their bulldozers and and you know volunteered their time to make sure that some, that one person was lifted up and and shown off to the world like then every community would be amazing. And that's the, one of the reasons why I'll never call anywhere else, but Unicleat home is because um, I know how much they love me and I know how much I love them back. And that's, that's what it's all about. Great oh, question. No, that's amazing. And I think, you know, community sense of communities, I feel like is lost amongst a lot of Western, you know, you know, a lot of Western, so not just America, but you know, uh, even Australia and whatnot, I think community mm -hmm. is a, is a lost concept um so it's no it's really nice to see that you know when when, when something goes wrong you know everyone can come together uh mm -hmm. the next one we sort of touched on but uh, maybe you have a slightly different response how how would you how would you train for ninja with no access to a ninja gym slash obstacles damn covid <laughs> 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 laughy laughy face <laughs> great 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 question um make it make it your own man make it, it dude like there's there's ninja obstacles you get one hour if you're in australia and you're and you're one making this comment you get one hour every day to go figure out a way to have fun out there um there's tree branches there's trees you can climb there's there's a uh, rate there's um ledges on the edges of your door if you've got good trim maybe put a couple of extra nails or screws in the trim at the top of your door frames in your house um turn things into obstacles. Um, you know, I mean, there's so many different ways you can do it. Um, uh, each and every obstacle is a solo section of its own, right? So mm. pull, pull together those, those ideas of what that, what, what movements do I need to be able to do this obstacle and then replicate that in a space that is, that is little because you really only need to have one hang board or one pull-up bar you can hook on your door um, and you can train really great stuff for Ninja Warrior. You don't have to have access to a Ninja Gym. I mean, I've proven that. I I built my own obstacle course out of driftwood on the on the beach, and um, I don't have access to a Ninja Gym per se, but I have access to Ninja Obstacles. But my first season on the show, I built a salmon ladder and I built a warp wall. That's all I had, and everything else was monkey bars at the playground, and you know jumping on and off of connexes or vans whatever you guys call them there um so like it's just a matter of coming up with new fun ways to get urban with it or in my case get village with it and have some fun <laughs> oh that's it man uh what's this next one did your approach to ninja change from your first season on the show to this season that's a good one that's a great question hmm. no <laughs> nope my first season on the show i got up onto the course and i was like holy crap i'm here i'm here i'm here this is so crazy i can't believe i'm here i'm here i'm here and when i get on the course now it's like oh my gosh i can't believe i'm here again like oh my gosh the only difference is i put a comma again afterwards like it's it's literally all the only change however i will say this with experience and having experience on the show my confidence has changed. Like the first time on the show, I literally was just out there surviving, you know, and now I'm out there doing what I do every single day because I've trained for it all the time. Mm. Um, so now it's like I'm out there to compete. I'm out there to have fun. But my mentality, my, 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 young, my young adult mind, even though I'm an old guy, my young adult mind is still very ever present. And um, 
and I'm still just a seven-year-old kid playing on a playground, only it's 32 feet across instead of 13 feet across. So, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, that's fair enough, man. A hundred percent. What's this next one? Any, oh, that's a good one. Anything new competitors overlook on the show apart from difficulty? Um, I think that new competitors... I think that like <clears throat> there's a lot of really great rookie competitors out there. So, you, you know, not every single person is the same, mm. but I feel like the ones that you're specifically asking about are the ones that fail early or, you know, get out on like the first or the second obstacle. And I think what they're doing is they're in their own head too much. And the thing they're overlooking is their abilities. The one thing that those rookies that fail early or that, um, that um, don't do as well as they know they're capable of doing is because they're overlooking their own abilities. They're overlooking that and they're thinking, oh, I'm on the show. Oh, there's big cameras. Oh, man, this, that, the other thing. And they start letting everything else get into their heads. Or they're looking at, oh, my gosh, that's Drew Dreschel. Oh, my gosh, that's Jesse Graff. Oh, my gosh, that's Grant McCartney. Oh, my gosh, that's Nick Hansen. Oh, my gosh, that's whoever it might be. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're starting to see that and they're starting to overlook the mirror and saying, Oh my gosh, there's Kadeem in the mirror. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh, there's Nick Hansen in the mirror. Like, why are you even worried about all of those other people? Just do what you do and go out there and have fun. And so, yes, that's the main thing that a lot of new competitors will overlook is the fact that they're there because they got selected to be there. And on American Ninja Warrior, only 600 people get selected out of over 70,000 submission videos every single year. Mm. And the reason why they chose you is because they wanted you to be there because they saw what you're capable of. Don't overlook that. Mm. Um, and don't ever overlook yourself. You are strong and you're capable and, um, and just got to get out there and have fun and do it. No, that's, that's 100%. Yeah, that's funny because I had that moment. Oh my God, Nick Hansen's taking me climbing. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, funny. That was no, that was that that see that was a cool moment, I guess, for me because you know I think being, you know, I know all the Australian ninjas, I know what's up there, but you know, being effectively an outsider again, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, oh man, oh yeah, it's David Campbell. You know, I've watched him, you know, many years, and you know, I know Jake Murray from when he came to came to australia but you know there's a handful of these ninjas I'm like huh this is cool <laughs> yeah you're one of them um all right what's the next one? Oh, this is a good one backstage routine when waiting for your name to be called that's a good one is that a secret or is can you can you share that or uh no secrets for me dude i'll be as transparent as i possibly can i want everybody to have as much insider scoops as they can so that they can be as relaxed as they can be when they get there um yeah. pre Pre-routine, uh, yeah, sit around, wait, watch the TV, see what other ninjas are doing. They usually have a TV for us so that we can, like, support our ninja friends that are out there on the course and also possibly get betas. Um, so you're kind of watching and just kind of seeing how each obstacle plays out for others. Mm. Um, and you kind of get yourself, you know, oh, okay, yeah, that's how it was done. That's how he did it. That's how she did it. Cool. That, that's about where I was at. And mm. then you don't allow that to get into your head too much. You kind of go into your own headspace. Um, mm. I'm not a headphone guy, so I don't really like to have headphones on or play music or anything like that. Mm. And then, you know, about 40 minutes, um, 40 to 45 minutes before my run or before I'm scheduled to run, I start to warm up and I start to get really warmed up and make sure my shoulders are good. I do literally the classic elementary school shoulder warm ups with the circles and and I do all that stuff to kind of get my shoulders really done because I have labrum tears. So you got to really make okay. sure that you're right on top of things. Um, and then, uh, and then I'd go and I kind of replicate the obstacles on the little warm up section stuff. They usually have a warm up th pieces of truss for you and a couple of bars to do pull ups on. Yeah. And so I kind of replicate the obstacles a little bit and just kind of plan um, just to kind of get the movements going and get my, you know, my muscles warmed up in the right way. Yeah. And then, uh, I eat half an apple and have some fun with it and just, you know, get going, you know, get a little sugar rush and, and then, uh, and then just pray and think about, you know, you know, what's going to happen and just ask for the best and, and hope for the best. And then go out there and right before every time, right before I take off on my run, they usually go five, four, three, two, and then they tell you one and then they point at you and that's your time to go. Mm. 
when he's counting down right after he points, I don't go. I take my moment, my, my, an extra half beat, an extra half a second to look at myself and go, just go, man. (laughs) And then I just, I just laugh inside myself and I just kind of get relaxed and then I go. Yeah, that's good. You're going on your time, not when they tell you. So that's, yep. that's awesome. I got, I think I've three more and then I'll let you go, man. So how, mm-hmm. how different was this COVID season compared to other years? I mean, did, how did it feel for you? Uh, the, the biggest bummer was I didn't get to hang out with my friends the way I wanted to, you know, we had to have mm-hmm. masks on, we had to sit a certain distance apart, you know, we couldn't really give hugs. Um, and that's kind of one of the main reasons I do Ninja Warrior, to be honest, is I, I want to go and I want to see my friends that I've made over the last six seasons and that, that have become family, you know, I mean, the Chicago group, Jesse and Chris are like, they're like my brother and sister, man. They're like family, you know, and Ethan Swanson, Ethan, Jake and Grant, like those three boys, like they're the boys, like they're the boys, like they're, that's, that's our crew. Like we'll go out and we'll do stupid things like rent scooters and go try to get crazy with it and stuff. (laughs) And you know what I mean? Like we, we're always together. And with COVID, we all had to kind of no hugging. We're air hugging each other. Oh man, I really wish I could hug you. And then, so it kind of created this like, oh yeah, we're together, but we're not, you know, it's like, it's like you're in the same room with somebody, but you're on the you're on your phone the whole time. It's like you're totally disconnected. So it was it was that was the biggest bummer about it. But it was also great because I still got to see them and I still got to hang out with them and say hey and you know and and do and do a little bit of time together while we were at the course, especially with my group because it was so stacked and it happened to be stacked with all of my friends. So I was like, sweet, I'm, I'm feeling really good about it. And I had my two Alaskan friends with me too. So I was like. You know, it was, it was actually not that bad. As far as being on the course goes, I liked it. I, mm. I like being no crowd. Um, I really love playing with the crowd and having fun and pointing at people and stuff sometimes. Mm. Um, but really when I'm on the course, I'm in a tunnel vision anyway, so I don't really see them. Yeah. Um, I get into my zone and I go do my thing. And then when I'm done at the buzzer, then I go and I see all the faces and I share with all the faces and stuff. So I didn't really get to share with all the faces, but the way they brought the screen on, um, the way they put the screens right there and you could see all of your family. Mm. It was very, very cool and relaxing. And, um, and you got a little bit more of a, ch- I could actually hear what Akbar and Matt were saying. It wasn't drowned out by a bunch of screaming and clapping and stuff. So that was really nice. <laughs> um, I could actually have a conversation with them and know what they were saying. Cause in the years past I've had a conversation and I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> and I just, I just answer what I think they said. And sometimes it was wrong. So <laughs> Um, but, um, yeah, so I I thought it was really fun and it was a cool dynamic. It brought a really cool dynamic to what Ninja can be. Yeah. That's awesome. Obviously like when you're running through the course, you can hear them, but they can't hear you until you get to, to the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, (laughs) I like this, this one here is one from my friend, Joel from uh, Switzerland. Uh, he goes, what what are your go-to shoes for the mega wall? (laughs) Go-to shoes. Man, if you, have, threes, you right? if you don't know what the go-to shoes are, bro, you, you've got to get, get on, get, start watching some episodes. You'll see it's a Zante, man. Uh, New Balance makes the Zante. They don't make them anymore, actually. So if you can twos, find right? them. There's twos, yeah. Zon- I'm a V2. Yep, yeah, I'm a V2. Right. Um, I did my first mega wall in a V3, though. Yeah. So um, it is possible. <clears throat> but uh there's nothing like the V2 compound, the sole of the V2 shoe. If you haven't gotten one already that fits you on off of Amazon for $69.99, then you're, you're going to be struggling as a ninja trying to figure out what shoe you're going to wear. <laughs> um, but I will say this, King, uh, King, Kingdom Ninja Daniel Gill did it in Nikes. <laughs> uh, it was in a gym. Uh, it was in a ninja gym, but he did the mega wall and he had like a 25 foot run up or something. So it was a lot longer run up, but he did it in Nikes. So it is possible to do it in any other shoe, as long as you're skilled and, t- and talented enough, like Daniel Gill is, which is the second best in the world uh, from America. Mm. So, um, you know, I'd love to see him race Ben just to kind of see how that goes. But, um, but yeah, so it would, it, it's, um, it is possible in other shoes, but if you have a pair of Zante V2s, you're feeling really good about it. <laughs> I remember you saying you have like a few that are like on shelves that you haven't even opened yet. So they must be, uh, 
<laughs> four, four, four pairs just waiting for the next few seasons to come up. <laughs> I'll have to look into it. Last one for you, man. Uh, how, how do you get, how do you, how do you get that wall like that? So good with tired legs. My guy is a beast, which I agree. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, second of all, I do things. Um, I do a lot of leg work. Mm. Um, I, I tell people a lot in comments that I I'm all legs, man. I'm all, like, people will say, How, how'd you make it look so easy? God, you make that look so easy. And I'm like, it's not easy. First of all, mm. um, it might look that way, but it's because I am all legs. I'm not a track and field star. Or I'm not like, a, um, you know, I've never done any track and field in my life, but what I do is called the native games, the Alaska native games. Mm. If you go to my Instagram or my, you know, social media accounts, um, you can find videos of me doing my native games but I do these games called the high kicks and it's a lot of very vertically explosive things. I'm, I mean, literally I take two feet and I kick a ball that's eight feet in the air with both right. feet. And then I come back down and I land and I have to maintain my balance once I land. So I'm mm. coming in with just raw power and mm. then I'm exploding vertically with raw power. And mm. then I got to kick my feet flexibility wise up above my head to mm. kick the ball and then come back down. So um, you know, go watch a video of it. You're going to, you're going to, you'll, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about and how difficult it looks. Cause it really is hard. And, um, you know, that raw power, that ability to accelerate and transfer that horizontal energy going to go vertical mm. the way that a lot of explosive jumpers like dunkers, like Zion and, and LeBron James and those guys do, um, to be able to transfer that horizontal velocity into vertical velocity is so valuable in, but it's a very natural thing that I've accomplished. It's a very natural thing for me to do. It's one of those things that I'm very talented at. Mm. Um, you know, a lot, some guys play really well on the drums. Some guys can coordinate to fly a plane. Some guys can do, you know, um, can play ping pong out of their mind. I'm, I'm a guy that can jump. I just naturally have that talented ability to, um, to get vertical. And so um, having that vertical ability has, has really what is really what helps me on the, um, on the warp wall. So um, I'm all legs, man. I'm all legs. I train legs. I, I do it all the time. I'm always jumping around and playing around and I, I run hills. I do sprints up steep hills. Um, so, um, you know, don't, don't neglect leg day. Don't neglect it. It's, nope. it's a valuable asset to have regardless of the fact that it tacks on like an extra freaking 30 pounds to your body, because that's also something ninjas want to be thinking about is how do you stay lean at the same time? Um, I don't, I'm 5'10", 175. So <laughs> I just have to deal with all that extra weight. I'm constantly using a weight vest and it's in my legs. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man bro thank you so much for coming on again it was um it was really awesome seeing you again catching up seeing what's been happening do you have much on for the day um right now man uh i'm, I'm looking at the sun coming out and i'm thinking the golf course sounds like a really good idea <laughs> um, i'm not the greatest golfer but i've been working on it i've been having a lot of fun because i'm stuck down here for you know at least in four more days so Damn. I'm really just kind of sitting around waiting for my time to get home so I can work on my house. Um, so I've done all of my chores. I've done all the chores I need. I've picked up all the materials I need. So I'm kind of just sitting around having fun goofing off with my brother. And uh, one of the ways I've found as a good pastime that I get to keep doing sports is going to the golf course and you can stay isolated. You can pay, a lot, pay online. You can walk up onto the course. Your tee time is there yeah. and you don't have to be around people. It's just you and the, you and the golf club. So um, that's been kind of one of my pastimes. So I'm either going to go for a bike ride, um, and, and support the bicycle, you know, the break the bicycle program, or I'm going to go swing the sticks and kind of see if I can get it below 80. <laughs> hey man, you're going to, you're going to get that. Was it three? You're going to get 300 yards or whatever it is. I'll, I'll... <laughs> a 300 yard drive okay I'm, i'll do it i'll i'll, I'll try my it. 300 yard drive and i'll see and i'll and i'll post it I'll, I'll text you later and i'll be like hey yo I filmed it. I got 300 yards and I'll, I'll see if I can do it. And we'll, we'll put it in the comment section. Bro, I'm, I'm backing you, man. 300. Let's do it. All right, Chan, I'll let you, 
I'll let you get to it, man. Thank you so much for coming on again. And uh, yeah, man, we'll, we'll definitely catch up soon. I appreciate it. Cool. Yep. Thanks. Thanks you guys. Thank you guys all for watching, man. Keep yeah. watching the show. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Champ. All right. Have a good one. And uh, we'll yep. talk later. <laughs> later, bro. See you, bro.